The U.S. Air Force is scheduled to begin flying testing with Boeing's MQ-28 Ghost Bat, a combat drone created for the Australian Air Force that may assist its American counterpart learn how to operate unmanned aircraft alongside fighter planes. Lieutenant Jen Clint Hinnot, who directs Air Force Futures, told Breaking Defense in a September 20 interview that the military is getting ready to take delivery of a drone prototype through the Pentagon's Research and Engineering Office, also known as OSD, R and E, R and E. It could look a lot like an Australian thing, he said, alluding to the ghost bat, which first flew in 2021 at Royal Australian Air Force Base Woomera. Pentagon spokesman Lieutenant Cedar Tim Gorman confirmed that the Research and Engineering Office is involved in development and experimentation efforts involving Ghost Bat, saying that OSD, R and E, continually works with the services to validate technologies that are key to advancing and fielding next-generation capabilities. He declined to disclose any specifics save to affirm that Ghost Bat is not being supported through the Rapid Defense Experimentation Reserve, RDER, an OSD, R and E, led operation wherein the services propose experiments and compete for funding. Boeing deferred comment on the topic to the Air Force. In recent weeks, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has hinted that the Ghost Bat could be a useful tool for the U.S. Air Force as it seeks to understand how semi-autonomous combat drones, what the service calls collaborative combat aircraft, could interface with the service's fifth and sixth generation fighters. Both CTA and a manned sixth generation fighter are slated to be part of the service's next generation air dominance family of systems, and Kendall has suggested a CCA competition could begin as early as fiscal 2024. During the interview with Breaking Defense, Hinnote highlighted that the Air Force has not made a final choice on which drones it would ultimately acquire as part of the CCA program, stating that Air Force Research Laboratory, Navy, and OSD, R and E, all have continuing initiatives for testing new drones. We're trying to learn off these prototypes to obtain some of that data that we need, he added. That will assist us grasp what the genuine buy looks like. And I think the ultimate buy is actually a family of drones, and that family might be many manufacturers, multiple architectures. Hinnot emphasized that the first MQ-28 Ghost Bat may not be mature enough to deploy into battle just yet. The first one sucks. Just constantly keep it in mind. Article 1 of everything we buy is not what we actually want, he remarked. However, CTAs are so unique that the Air Force can gain from learning how to use the system as the technology continues to advance. I don't know yet how fast you can pull one off the runway, put gas in it, put weapons on it if that's what you want to do, add a new cartridge or new software update. Hinnote said, even fundamental sustainment techniques might vary between manned fighters and CCAs. Do you have to check the oil? Every time we fly a jet right now, we get approximately that much oil out of it, and we go, okay, are there any particles in it? I don't think you're going to do it with a drone. Richard Abulafia, an aviation expert at Aerodynamic Advisory, said the major question that will influence the needs of the CCA program is, how good is artificial intelligence actually? If your eye doesn't match expectations, then you're looking at larger loyal wingman planes with a two to one ratio or a one to one ratio to manned fighters. If I advances quicker, then you're looking at smaller systems that swarm, he added. In other words, the more trustworthy and powerful an AI system is, the more drones a single human pilot will be able to control. However, additional technical and operational issues exist. Abu Lafia noted, how will CCAs be deployed during battle? And how far may they wander from manned fighters? Will the drones have to stay inside visual ranges of manned aircraft in order to continue to transfer data back and forth utilizing covered data links. Will CTA operate within visual ranges of opposing aircraft? 
And even if AI gets smart enough that a fighter pilot can handle a vast swarm of small drones, if the drones are so small that they can't carry the weapons or sensors now available, does it really matter? It's absolutely unwritten at this point, said Abu Lefia, who added that the Air Force needs a brutally honest A technology roadmap to assist design the CCA program. The Air Force's suddenly unexpected interest in reviewing the MQ-28 is a good news story for Boeing, given the Ghost Bat was initially a part of AFRL's Skyboard program. It was eventually forced to withdraw due to schedule conflicts, as the Ghost Bat prototypes were engaged in demonstrations with the Royal Australian Air Force and could not be transferred to the U.S. in time. Break. Jen Dale White the Air Force's program executive for fighters and advanced aircraft, said in August. The Skyborg initiative intends to combine low-cost drones with a government-owned autonomous corps for a series of flying tests. Demonstrations using General Atomic's MQ-20 Avenger and Kratos' UTAP-22 Mako and XQ-58A Valkyrie are continuing ongoing.